Meantime, the ladies are underway. The men start tomorrow. You can see it right here, 1230 Eastern Delray Beach on Tennis Channel. This is the projected quarterfinals, Jim. So we see the top seeds, four Americans in that group. That's right. Paul and Isner down at the bottom there, slated to meet in the quarterfinals. Uh, Sam Query's had a good offseason here in uh, Southern California. He might match off against Garin, the one seed from Chile. We got Hercotch, the the uh, the wizard of the tweener. He's in there. And then Francis Tiafo, we'll talk more about him. He's got the, the tricky lefty, Manorino. Potentially, these are all potential matchups. They've got some work to do to get there. Those are the potential. These are the guarantees. This is our order of play for tomorrow. Starts with Tommy Paul. And then Andy, Sebastian Corda, somebody as an American, uh, got to the fourth round at Roland Garros last year, played his hero. Rafa, his cat is named Rafa. What kind of progression are you expecting from Sebi this year? Yeah, a, a big one. Um, you know, it, it's nice to see someone kind of like embracing the expectation. Uh, I, I kind of see him in, in the mold of a, of a Thomas Burditch a little bit. They're not the fastest guys in the world, and it doesn't really show that they're swinging real hard at the ball, but the ball comes off real thick and he can serve uh, big a little inconsistent with the percentages sometimes but uh, I know is uh, one of the people who works with him is Dean Goldfine who is a former coach of mine who I know real well says great things about his attitude wants to put the work in wants to be a great player uh, which is a big part of the battle and uh, I, I expect big things coming from uh, from Seb quarter this year. Oh, we saw some of those matchups. And how about Sam Query? Yep. We're going to see him in action for the first time since all chaos broke loose at the St. Petersburg tournament for him. He actually hasn't won a match since last year's Australian Open. Didn't play tons in 2020, but he's lost his last five matches in a row. A lot of chaos surrounding him in the offseason. Jim said he's had a good training session in Southern Cal. Maybe he can start clean uh, this year. It'll be a tough start against Mackie McDonald, who did not have a great year last year either. So uh, two Americans looking to start the season well. Francis Tiafo, you saw he was the eighth seed in Delray Beach. Won his only ATP tour, tour title in Delray Beach. That was in 2018. Jimmy had a losing record on the court last year, but off the court, he was an absolute force for change. Made that video rackets down, hands up to spread awareness about racial injustice. And here you see he won the Arthur Ashe Humanitarian Award. Yeah, it was a huge year for Francis from a growth standpoint off the court. Just tremendous strides for him in maturity. And if he can have that type of, of maturity now translate on court in 2021, he's going to have a heck of a year on the court. We know what his upside is. We've seen him play so well in Australia before. He's lightning quick. He can rip the forehand. He's got the tight, compact backhand. There's a lot to like there. He's done a lot of work this offseason with Zach Evenden, his, his normal day-to-day -day coach, and also Wayne Ferreira. And Wayne has talked to me when I saw him in Orlando with Andy a couple weeks ago at a Champions event about how much harder Francis has been working this offseason. So it seems like all of that growth is paying off from the, the off-court coming on court as well. Yeah, and, and certainly with this award, he wrote a letter, a, a beautiful letter to Arthur Ashe that you can read on ATPTour.com. Quoted Arthur Ashe, said, something you once said that always sticks with me. From what we get, we can make a living. From what we give, however, makes a life. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's such a big deal. And I, I think we're all lucky um, to come from the, the, the vacuum of the sport. Uh, that we come from as far as social change with, uh, you know, Billie Jean and, and, and Arthur Ashe and, and what they've stood for, that trickles down. And, uh, and Francis has certainly learned those lessons uh, in a weird way. Getting this award will probably motivate him to do even more and, and, and speak out and use his voice. Uh, so kudos to Francis. Uh, that's, uh, that's great work. And uh, I, I know uh, we wish nothing but the best for him uh, on the heels of this award this year. Absolutely, and he will get things started in Delray Beach, the place where he has won his only ATP Tour title. Meantime, we've got some more news on practice partners in Australia. These are trickling in here and there. Lindsay's telling us about some of them. Uh, Andy, what, what do you make <laughs> on the men's side with these groupings that we see on the screen? I, I love the, the fact that these, these really, really good players are going out and getting some competition for that practice week. You imagine what the Walrinka Schwartzman battles. Yeah, like, why don't we just play a game to 11 real quick? And they both just start swinging out of their shoes and sweat. Yeah, I love it. And the fact that you see someone like FAA going for, uh, you know, kind of a, a big, big slam result. And Berrettini, who wants to bounce back and kind of put himself in that conversation uh, deep in the second week, like he did the U.S. Open a couple weeks ago. I like that these guys are going out and seeking tough competition for that first week to kind of set precedent. That's going to be a good uh, good play for these guys. We talk about practice. 
<laughs> Diego Schwartzman Talk would have been practice? one of my picks. He definitely would have been one of my picks. Talk about a sweet ball striker who's going to give you great rhythm. He's not going to blow you off the court with his serve. I mean, I think it's a very heady play by Stan Popperin and Francis. That's a good one, too. Popperin has a good serve. I think they'll get some good, uh, some good practice going in there. But we're talking a lot about practice here the first couple days. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. <laughs> <laughs> practice. Shout out. Allen Iverson, big tennis go. fan, right? Uh, on the women's side, Lindsay, there's some very interesting matchups, including the one right here between Victoria Azarenka and Daria Kazakina. It was in Rome last year that Kazakina twisted her ankle, and Victoria Azarenka, one of the biggest sportsmanship moments of the season, came over and gave her that comfort. Yeah, it was one of the best moments that we saw last year in sportsmanship on the women's side, and those two have decided to team up. I think that's a good mix. You've got Kazakina that can absorb power, give a lot of variety, and Vika, she brings the intensity, and that is actually maybe something that could help Kazakina. Mm. Seeing that in practice every day, you have Mert and Sabalenka, doubles partners as well. They'll get to work on their singles and doubles. Kvitova and Anna Samova, that is a funny one to me because they, I guess, Kvitova's lefty and Anna Samova's righty, but similar styles. Flat ball hitters, very hard. Neither one of them covers the court that well. I just think it might be a little tough to get rhythm out there, but who knows? We shall, that's for the first week, so we'll see what happens as they progress. They can add people in that second week.